Uh, KPMG announced the drastic changes as it battles to save itself from the consequences of doing business with the Gupta family, including the resignation of the chief executive officer and eight other officials. KPMG also withdrew a report on the so-called ROG unit at the South African Revenue Services, SARS, that raised questions about the leadership of Praveen Gordon when he was still the SARS commissioner, as well as other tax officials. The auditing firm has been accused of facilitating tax evasion, money laundering and corruption by giving Gupta-linked entities clean audits. Now, for more on this... Uh, we are now joined uh, by the former SARS uh, spokesperson, Adrian Lakey, and he joins us uh, from our Pretoria studios. Good afternoon, Adrian. Nice uh, to chat to you once again. Firstly, as a former SARS employee yourself, what is your reaction to the exit of uh, the seven senior KPMG executives yesterday? Good afternoon, Aubriel. Uh, thank you again for the opportunity to participate in this program. I think the one's initial reaction to the announcement yesterday by KPMG is that their latest action should be welcomed. Um, however, when really studying the content of what they said publicly, one is still left disappointed um, by their commitment um, to review their findings, to withdraw their forensic report that they provided to SARS because if you want to apologize to the former Minister of Finance in the way that KPMG did, if you want to account fully for your actions since 2015, you have to be fully transparent. You have to take the South African public into your confidence and be very transparent about the facts that transpired and the conduct of your own officials. Um, regarding the forensic investigation that you carried out on behalf of the South African Revenue Service. Because at the heart of the problem here is the fact that a number of very senior officials in SARS either had to resign, lost their jobs, or ultimately faced criminal charges and investigations by the Hawks and the National Prosecuting Authority. And for those officials, some of whom are still within SARS, some of whom are still suspended, there's been very little comfort or any form of justice by the announcement yesterday by KPMG because clearly the company still hasn't dealt with the facts and they have not been open and transparent to the South African public about their conduct regarding SARS. Now let's uh, get things uh, 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 straight from your side. Um, was your exit yourself um, from SARS directly or indirectly linked to that uh, KPMG report, Adrian? I would argue at best it was indirect. KPMG was appointed by SARS and Commissioner Tom Moyani in December 2014, and that is uh, available in their own documents. And they were instructed to carry out a forensic investigation to basically test the narrative at that stage, if I can call it that, of a rogue unit that operated within SARS. They interviewed a number of people, they interviewed a huge uh, set of documents that they retrieved from SARS and the SARS system. And then uh, by about September 2015, we saw the first headlines which uh, allegedly reported on what they found. The disappointing thing about the conduct of KPMG is that they find, they make a number of findings um, against people. And the people who were affected, including the Deputy Commissioner of SARS, Mr. Ivan Pele, the former Deputy Commissioner, Mr. Johan van Lochrenberg, Mr. Piet Richer, a senior executive of SARS, and a number of other officials. They were, uh, findings were made against them, and to this day, none of those affected, including Mr. Pravin Gordon, the former Minister of Finance, who is also implicated by KPMG's findings, none of them were ever given the opportunity uh, by KPMG's team of investigators to answer the allegations against them to make submissions uh, or to refute uh, what KPMG ultimately find against them. And there's a basic principle in our law, Audi Artem Partem, that says when allegations are being made against you, when you are the subject of an investigation, you, have, you must be afforded the right of reply. You must be given an opportunity to refute, to state your case, and ultimately an independent view must be formed. Now, what I also know is that since 2015, 
some of my former colleagues that I've mentioned have been pleading with KPMG, the CEO, the head of legal services, the head of forensic investigations, please can we make submissions to you, please can we make representations to you, please can we challenge your findings and provide factual evidence to contradict what you have found. And every time through the lawyers of KPMG the doors have been shut, there's been an arrogance and there has been no willingness to engage people and listen to them even those affected who have lost their jobs. So if you want to now issue a statement and say to South Africa, we distance ourselves from what has been found in 2015 and we want to apologize, the least you could do is listen to the people affected and be frank and open about the facts of what has happened over the past two years. Now, do you know whether any of those people that uh, you have referred to, including uh, the former finance uh, minister, Pravin Gordon, do you know whether all of them or some of them are now seeking legal recourse? I've been in touch with a number of them since yesterday, since KPMG issued its statement. Um, they are studying the public statement of the company. They are talking to their respective lawyers to identify what is the best legal recourse they can pursue. Because clearly, um, I think any reasonable person sitting where I'm sitting would say, well, the admissions or the attempt at admitting some wrongs by KPMG now presents some kind of legal basis for further actions. Because like I've said, people have lost their jobs, their reputations have been tarnished, and there's, there's just absolutely no consequences um, besides the resignations that we saw yesterday. There's no consequences on the side of the Hawks who was driving an investigation throughout 2015 and 2016, including against Mr. Pravin Gordon, Mr. Ivan Pillay, Mr. Opa Mahashula. Mr. Pillay and Mr. Van Lochrenberg had to appear at the Hawks in September last year for warning statements. They incurred legal costs, they had to protect themselves, and they had to pay for it themselves. So there are serious considerations that those affected would have to make, and they would of course act on good, sound, uh, and appropriate legal advice as to what actions to take next. From what they said uh, just yesterday, uh, the audit firm have now Apologize. They have agreed to their mistake. They say, we will pay 40 million rands to education and anti-corruption activities and also pay back uh, the 23 million rands to SARS for the work that was done. In your view, Adrian, is that enough? Does that go far enough? I think it's a very good commitment to say the fees that we were paid by SARS for this work, we'll return it. Um, but like I've indicated in this interview, the, the people who are really adversely affected, the people who've lost their jobs, can find very little comfort in the commitments KPMG made yesterday. Um, there are at least still two employees within SARS. They, they are named in the KPMG report of 2015. And a recommendation is made that SARS as the employer must take disciplinary actions against them. When those disciplinary actions started, they are now suspended for more than two years. They, again, they had to defend themselves. They had to seek the help of lawyers and they had to pay those bills. Their careers are significantly and adversely affected. Their families suffer. They are traumatized themselves um, and there's no recourse for them. There's no recourse for Ivan Pillay, Pete Richer, Yolisa Pique, Johan van Lochrenberg, or former SARS colleagues who can't find jobs anywhere else in the corporate sector or in government. Because a KPMG report stated unequivocally that they established and they ran a rogue covert intelligence unit in SARS. The findings were unequivocal that this unit reported to Mr. Pillay, it broke the law, it obtained information about taxpayers illegally, it targeted politicians, and it accrued fruitless, wasteful, and unlawful expenditure. Now, those are serious findings. So if you want to issue a statement as this big multi-corporation KPMG and say as a good gesture, I will return the fees because now I realize the conduct of my people was not what it should have been and we were wrong. What about those affected? Those affected have had no voice to state their case, to clear their names with you. They are still not being afforded an opportunity to make representations to you to this day. 
And all I can hope for is that the new CEO was announced yesterday and a new management team that will take things forward for the company would be a little more accommodative, a little less arrogant and a little more willing to listen to people when they say your findings were wrong, you found what your client SARS wanted you to find and you have ended our careers. Can we now sit down and talk? That would be a far better start than a mere public relations exercise to say we will return the money and give more money for charity. Okay, Edwin, now that the truth is out, uh, do you yourself, um, including uh, the others that have since exited SARS, do you see yourself, uh, once the legal process has been, has been done, back at uh, uh, SARS uh, um, uh, to perform your duties then? I think that is very unlikely and highly improbable under the current SARS leadership because we have a scenario here where KPMG, whose report you as SARS used to institute criminal charges um, to persuade the Hawks or the NPA to prosecute and persecute people, there's been no consequences for you. The people who should be sitting in this chair right now should be Tom Oyane, the SARS commissioner, Luther Labilo, the head of employee relations, and other SARS executives who were involved in this investigation. They should be answering to the public why they directed KPMG to make certain th findings through their firm of attorneys, why they allowed this thing to continue for two years, persuading the National Director of Public Prosecutions to issue summons against Pravin Gordon Finance Minister Ivan Pillay former Deputy Commissioner, Opa Mahashula, former Commissioner of SARS, in October 2016, only for those summonses and those charges to be withdrawn. They have a lot of questions to ask about their own conduct, and until that situation remains, I cannot see myself ever going back to the Revenue Service. We are still committed as former public service servants to work for public institutions uh, to support the growth and development of our democracy. But under current conditions, it seems highly, highly unlikely. And finally, uh, what reputational damage do you think uh, has been done, not just to the individuals involved, but to the institutions themselves that have been fingered in this report? I think that's a broader concern um, that goes beyond SARS. Uh, I think SARS's own reputation suffered and continues to suffer. But if you also look at the broader statement of KPMG, they talk about their role um, as the auditor for various Gupta companies. And what came to light through news reports and the Gupta leaks as it has become known. And the question that still remains in my mind, if those emails never leaked, if there wasn't this persistent news coverage on the conduct of KPMG as an auditor, would they have done what they did yesterday? Would they have actually come out to say we should have ended our business with Gupta companies earlier? Our conduct was questionable. We should have acted earlier. It is highly doubtful given the past conduct and the experiences some of us had with KPMG. But what worries one most is the damage that has been done to state institutions like the Revenue Service and other state-owned companies where there has been clear um, inappropriate use of public resources directed to enrich one family and one set of politically connected people and KPMG stands central in all of this. We know that now, we didn't know that in 2015 or 2016, but I think South Africans are becoming far more aware and far more concerned about the state of our state-owned entities and our state institutions. All right, let's end it there. Thank you so much uh, for your time. Uh, that was the, the former uh, SARS spokesperson, Adrian Lekey, speaking to us live uh, from our Pretoria studios.